So now tell us about your high school playing ability. When yeah. you were in high school, tell us. It looks like your team won all four years. Yeah, we did, but you know, it just wasn't there. My passion uh, in middle school kind of faded Lost out. Lost it a little bit. You that said makes... team one. Is team two more like the understudies? One, W-O-N. Oh, one. <laughs> That was real. <laughs> what was your team name? <laughs> that was. Um, I got a. <laughs> I real Christian is fucking stupid. Okay. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> oh, was there a team too? <laughs> It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. How are you feeling? Is there anything I can do to make you feel more comfortable? I should phrase that differently. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm kind of feeling my way through. Ah, I see. Feeling my way downtown. Oh, guess. sing it. Uh, no, 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 you know. Oh, you got shy? I've only done, yes, I guess shy. I've shy. I've only done... One karaoke ever. Really? Why? Because. I'm sorry, I'm so judgmental. The question is why? For a guy uh, that does it all the time and the guy that has done it a few times, I'm I'm curious. Um, I've never been just like thrown on the spot and like felt up to it, mm. but like recently, it was fairly recent. It was this month, I think. I was just my name was put on uh the list and I got called. I'm like, and I knew people that were working. Uh -huh. I was like, God. And how'd it go? It went pretty okay. Are but you a decent performer? Maybe I should phrase that differently as well. I know that's because uh, karaoke is more about the performance, less it is. of the singing. Oh, I I, I soaked it up and I kind of like got into character, if you if you will. Mm. And it was funny because as soon as I um, picked the song, there was a, a gentleman in the crowd like, "Gotta sing it with you!" And I was like, Whoa. "Hell yeah!" I'm not a duet person. I'm not a duet person, but because I've never done, it, I don't know how to get like give on stage and take on stage i'm like well what was the song and was it du a duet and did you know song? that guy it was uh temptations Ooh, it was uh it's four people in there you could have brought oh, about two more people well, five there you go yeah, I, know, three people. I know i just I, I i i took took it and ran with it and i was just like so in the moment i like and it was actually stunned because he raised his hand to take i'm like i was caught off guard i've caught off did that help your nerves? The fact that there was gonna be someone yeah, up there. Yeah, is it better? Dream? Heck yes. That was someone else was mm. wanted to like. Oh my, why can't I think of the name of the song? My girl. My girl. It was that one. Yep. Do you are you good at giving speeches? Are you good at public speaking? That you seem like the type. I you, think you I'm, coach. So I think I'm terrible, but I tried my best to be an orator in how I deliver whatever message I'm trying to deliver. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm very spacey at times. Because you're, I don't know. I mean, like I said earlier downstairs, you said you're an introvert at heart. However, I think it's a deep facade. I mean, you know, it's a because. It was a joke. You're able to, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> dude. Of, was, this guy is a monster. He's I'm just a, gullible. Get the fuck out of here. Up. I believed you, bro. Okay. No, even right before well, we, what's up? I was just going to say, we've known Ryan. It was, I was being facetious, yes. Ah. But, we, but I, I mean, I've, I've known you since the sixth grade. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. I don't know if I knew you in the sixth grade. Um, but I don't know. There's a lot of things about you, Ryan, that I think I know. But I don't, I mean, as I get to talk to you and speak with you and hang out mm -hmm. with you, because it's not like we talked in high school. It's not like we hung out or like. We always cross paths. And yeah. I have a funny story about what I remember most about you, but um, you can get to that. But just, it's just that, so I'm really excited to finally like talk wow. and like have this moment of being like, that's what's beautiful. Because you always point out what's beautiful about the podcast is yeah. it's a time to talk and listen and like. Yeah. It's what this is. Um, it could be a double-edged sword because sometimes. Uh, it is a it is the reason why sometimes we get to hang out with people and sometimes i don't want that to be the crutch that we get to hang out with people but it on the other end of that spectrum it is also a reason for us to catch up with some people mm -hmm. cuz look what we did prior to like even uh, me hitting up the, this record button we hung out for an hour downstairs and just talked with zero pressure love that and now I mean, like it. This you you are an, a person that has been in our lives for a while. Should we just like get into introducing? Yeah, and then yeah, and then you can tell your story about what you remember because I think I know. 
All right, well, we'll baddies, about. welcome to another episode of ICBTB's Highly Irrelevant. Irrelevant. We have a special guest right here in the studio. Right now, we have Ryan Wheat. Hello. A, an old homie of ours, someone that has always been uh, very athletic, very outgoing, very, very nice, and... Uh, a longtime fan of the show, listener of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you... Episode one, you were there right off the bat, always there for us. So mm-hmm. thank you. Before we get into it, explain what you're wearing right now. You have a, an amalgamation of so many different things going on. <laughs> wow. If I were to look at you, I would be like, this guy is a lone wanderer. He's a creative character from the PGA game. Just plug things you in. You say curated or Korean creative character? character. <laughs> I thought I said Korean character. I mean, you're wearing an Asian uh, an Asian gi, I think a short sleeve gi right now, it and was I'm a digging gift. it. It was a gift. Okay, it's well, beautiful. break it all down. What's, what's going on? Uh, well, this was a gift, like I said, this was was uh, uh, a California bear, rawr. Rawr. Um, Alex Middleton so kindly placed on my chair. He said, I put that there for you to wear, and how can you not? Uh, yeah, and then like before he takes all the credit, that's my, that is Christian's that's my Goodwood necklace. If you knew me in high school, I used to wear that all the time. Fun fact about that, that I guess it's not as fun anymore uh, with today's culture, but it did smell like uh, boobs at the time because so many girls... Walked up to me and wanted to wear it. Smelled like boobs. Yeah, it doesn't smell like ten year old boobs anymore. I've been oh, worn ten years ago. More ten than, years ago, dude. More than, yeah, that's about ten years. We're up to thirteen. <laughs> but that's been through a lot, and it uh, we only give it to the most special guests. We've Thank actually you. never given it to a guest. Uh, uh, maybe Juliet is the only. Yeah, one I can't one. be the first. I got to take it off on the first. It's all good. Okay, what's the story the that second. you have to uh, tell? Okay, uh, to finish. I got brown corduroys and NBA, <laughs> a- a- NBA socks. Um, so we played football together. Together. Nice. And yeah, we did. I can't remember what year. I think it was JV year. He we were playing Vannon, I think, and he fell on a fumble and he happened to land in the end zone. And it was a touchdown. I was like, What you did? Wow. That's a, great. So such a happy accident. We heard Alex Middleton. I'm like, we thought it was just a fumble, and then we hear Alex Middleton mm-hmm. touchdown. I was like, no mother way. Did anyone record this? Because this yeah, should oh, be pinned a, to the top of your record, IG. Because it was a sack. Fumble. Yeah, it was. No, recovery. That's right. It made it extra special. Yeah, sack and <laughs> touchdown fumble recovery. I fucking. The whole shebang. I love that. That is the equivalent of like in basketball, someone shoves you and you accidentally throw the ball from half court. No, and then it's you not. Get it it's, in. it's like you put the game on your back. To do a sack, force fumble recovery in the end zone, it's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll come up. I've never I, heard of this. I just want to say. I don't mean to interrupt, but in my football, my very short football career, I had one of everything. I had one force fumble, one fumble recovery, one touchdown. The only thing I didn't have one of was an interception. <sighs> the one interception, the ball was coming. I read it right. I was right on the key. I'm going to catch the ball. Ryan jumps in front of me and catches the ball and takes it. <laughs> and <laughs> they're just like oh my god the only like the closest i did i just i did it i did everything right and then just you know and what it's gone this it is gone. for you to retrieve that opportunity again you have to go back and rejoin oh, the high school football I jv have team. dreams that i would go to the high school and be like you need a player for one game <laughs> alex at, you're 30 at, years old 30 years old strapping and honestly at 30 years old i would wreck these high school fucking players especially because yeah, you're yeah. 30 years old <laughs> especially at the benicia level because this isn't like we aren't fucking all-star athletes here but uh but i'm just saying i just that's the only one category i have a zero in but they How are. did you feel after you got that interception? He doesn't know because he you got don't so remember many. it. It was just another, just another sticker on the back Whoa, of Ryan's right. helmet. Just, just like, another day just at work. Just another uh, reward. All right. Yeah, I was just going on instinct or reaction. At, Ryan is an athlete, and we've said it before. We've said it in other episodes. I've mm-hmm. talked about your athleticism. You've done, yeah, you've done everything: football, just a baseball. Specimen. This is an athlete here. Athlete. No, I can tell by his physique that he's definitely lifted more things than we have. You can tell by his mustache, but everything else says <laughs> athlete. The mustache is lifted more than me. The mustache. Your facial hair has gone lifting. through a journey as much as you have as well. Oh, it has. You were telling me today you had mutton chops in your passport picture? Yes, had, I was. Good memory. On your like IG, <laughs> you have mutton chops. That is that a whole mutton chop that when it connects from the sideburns to the... to the. Up? I just shaved my chin. I was like, I haven't seen my chin since 2016. Let me... Shave it. Really? Whoa. No, I, I was egged on by a coworker. I was like, "Why not?" You know, facial hair like life is temporary. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. All hair oh, is temporary. If you you think about are it. ballsy to like 
because I get irritated if I miss a spot shaving mm-hmm. just for the day. I I was telling you that I have like a, a sprinkle of OCD. You and, and I'm I like, oh, what the fuck? You and I both, yeah. Chest hair status. What's what's going on there? Uh, chest hair status is it's it's full. It's full. It's, it's tough. a full. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You're not quite the Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, that's like a decent amount. From like what you've noticed, have like ladies they they like the beard, they like the hair. I like it. Is it something that you think if I were to like knock on wood, if Melissa and I didn't work out and I have to go on the dating apps, no. is it something that I have to preface on my profile? Chest hair? Chest just only if you like excessive do, body hair. If you just like do a design. <laughs> You like lightning bolts, and then like no, no, no. you'll find out later, yeah. and then you take off your shirt and like three lightning bolts. Well, because I get comments sometimes. One time you I get wore comments. A, I wore a button-up shirt, and I would you know in the summertime it gets hot, so I buttoned it three buttons down. And you you called you said I look like a Russian nightclub owner. And I, I, after that, I <laughs> think I brought it up one button. Three is three is a statement. It's a statement, three but it's not statement. hitting my belly button. Two is like, Ryan, what do you think? Two is like, ooh, it's hot and I'm having fun, but three is, woo, it's three a is a statement. Ah, oh, man. Three <laughs> buttons down, you are a fucking Miami Vice nightclub owner. It was confidence until that that comment, <laughs> until these comments, and now it's just back wow. to because two it, buttons. Here's my, here's my thing. What? At three buttons down, your caller is now out to here. Mm. <laughs> No, I because I don't manually just spread it. <laughs> Go three buttons down right now. I'll and do we'll... two. I'll do two. I'm a two kind of guy. Max. Because three is ridiculous. Who are you? Scarface? That's good. No, that's that looks good. like. That's good. Especially since you've got a decent collarbone I, going because on. Because I'm telling you, three is just two. Two. Two, two max. Two is two is max. Then we'll One keep is it good, at that. Two is max. We'll three keep is, it at that. Three is Scarface. Three is a. Three is a. You're sending a message. Okay. You're. Yeah. You know what I do. Can you bring the mic closer wanna, to your face, by the way. I don't want to say hello to your little friend if you're, you know, three, four down. You know. <laughs> if I'm unbuttoning, sometimes I'll unbutton from the bottom. You're disgusting. So we see belly button before we see collarbone. Is the most vile sometimes, thing I've ever heard of. Well, first of all, I'm always wearing an undershirt, but sometimes I'll oh, okay. unbutton and just do the. I'll go cholo with it. Yeah, but just... you're you're half cholo, so you could you can go. <laughs> oh, well, yes, I'm half Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got you. I got you in a bad one. All right, let's move on. I have a story that I want to bring up with you specifically, oh. <laughs> you, and I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do. And let me talk first, because I'm the victim here, guys. I am a cis brown male that was brutally harassed. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He knows. This is when Ryan did a hate crime. <laughs> no, <laughs> he targeted. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ryan, you are the you are the nicest man I've ever met, and it's really just the funniest story. Oh no! So back in high school, I I, I was part of the marching band, and after as an extracurricular after school, we would practice our marching up in the parking lot, and. I, I played the tuba. Um, no, you played the sousaphone. The sousaphone, which is like the tuba that you hold on your back so you can march with it. It's the one that they had to get designed by a cobra because it wraps around your body. It looks like a brass cobra. Exactly. Bro-bra. And this thing yep. is, if I could put a number to it. How much weight? Si- how much weight? Yeah. Is it heavy? It's very heavy. 30, 40 pounds? Or... I'd say like 50. And how to... many sousaphones are, were in the band with you? Five? There's about four or five of us. We want like a solid line of it. And you guys yep. did a boop, boop. Boop, we were the baseline. Boop, boop, a very boop, important boop, boop, part. Boop, boop, but boop, matched boop, my boop. body type. And so this thing, just to put a number on it, $6,000. No. Yes. Probably in when you first freshly Wait, buy it, $6,000. Did you know that? Yep. I knew the you know ballpark. <laughs> ballpark estimate, yep. I thought I thought at most $600. So at this, we, were, we broke off into sectionals. And uh, when you're doing sectionals, like you're kind of just clapping and keeping time and you don't have to have the sousaphone on. So I set it down on the floor. It's after school, maybe an hour after school it ended. Not many cars in the parking lot. Because you guys would practice in the parking lot because you were in a marching band. Yes. Yes. And then uh, I set mine down and I walk away from it. Just not even just a few feet. And after maybe 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. all I hear is Christian. (laughs) Someone ran over your tuba. Wait, it doesn't make like a sound when someone runs over it because that means cartoons lied to me. And they said it was a white pickup truck that that ran over your... I don't, okay, my memory's you, a little job. You jobbed. ran, right? You drove away. <laughs> it was a hit and run? <laughs> wait, wait, what happened? What, what's, what's going on? Like, What's your perspective of this? To my recollection, <laughs> it was a Friday. I love the day. After school. And I was just, we were chilling, getting up to our, our um, cars. You guys were starting practice, 
had it on the ground in a like right leading up to a stairway. Yeah. So it was like checker mark. No one could park beside me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> this is true. And I think we were either going to we were going to a game, home or away. I don't know, but I was leaving, and I backed up. <laughs> I backed up because no one could park to my right. I just swung it left and backed up, and I heard clink, clink, clink. So you felt it. <laughs> I felt it, and I, as soon as I felt it, I finished going over it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a very malleable metal. Yeah, it so it wasn't it. like made out of human bone. <laughs> It felt like it felt like something, but it didn't. It felt like a bag, a backpack. I was like, oh, because oh, it went under the weight of the truck. You right. thought you ran over some textbooks, maybe. Yeah, and I back up and I like park, but I'm like right in the middle, and I get out. Like, what the heck was that? And it, I realized it's a band instrument, and I was like, it's <laughs> the a biggest, band so the biggest band I instrument. I it's a band instrument. No, the biggest. I recognized what it was. It was the biggest. Band instrument. You didn't run over the horn, or the bell. It, 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 I think it crimped it the, the the cobra like abdomen <gasps> as we were talking about. The it, abdomen, right? yes. But it like the bell was just like kind of like collapsed on itself, but it was still there. And... <laughs> playable, playable? No, 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 no. It was flat as a pancake. And dude. I got out and I saw the band director, Mr. Martin. <sighs> yeah, Mr. Martin. And he came up, and I recognized him like. Dude, I'm so sorry, but I did not expect anything to be there. Yeah. And he's like, and yeah, but like, what are we going to do about this? Like, oh no. So there's a school budget for that. Then so. Yeah. And it was an old, to make you feel better, it was an old sousaphone. I had one of the crappier ones. Yeah. So it needed to get switched. So as much as this sounds like I'm coming out, uh, uh, coming out? <laughs> I'm coming, coming out, out, guys. As much as it sounds like I'm out for blood, I'm not. Because I should thank you because I got a brand new sousaphone after that. And they got – Mr. Martin got with the administration and they re realized they have school insurance. And I'm like mm – -hmm. Did they scare you at all? Like, did they make me like, you're going to yeah, have to pay I, for this? I only had barista money at the time and I was like, well – I don't even want a sousaphone. Dang, guess I'm not going to college, you know? Oh, my – okay, wait. All jokes aside – when I bring this up or when this gets brought up, does it bring up like a soft spot in your heart that brings back like some trauma? No, is it it's in just your like, heart or your belly? Where do you feel? It's this? in my belly. <laughs> it's in my belly. And like, tell you know I, my heart, he, he's in my heart for that. But And I was like, dang, my friend, I ran on my friend's sousaphone. So you stole Christian's sousaphone. You stole my like, interception. And, and he came up, he came up running. And he was like, dude. My like, tuba, my tuba. No. It's called the baby. He has a more he had a more robust sound still, oh, you know. My tuba, know. My tuba dude, like my tuba, my tuba dude. <laughs> I was like, he's like, he's like, I could see being like, dude, my tuba. He's like, he he had that face, that look on his face. He was like, dude, like, what am I gonna do? The do? Face. Came Did up, I? Came up running, and you were just uh, kind of like astonished that I ran over it, and that you had left it there only for probably a few minutes mm. max. You know what? If thinking back. And knowing the type of person I was, there's no way I could have been mad at you or who had ever done it. There's I, immediately because of the way I was raised, I would, I would immediately blame myself. Like I shouldn't have put it behind a truck. I could have just moved it a little bit. You wasn't behind. It was to the side. But it, I just oh, was of there. The swing. Was there a brief moment of relief of being like, now I don't have to be in the band anymore. <laughs> there was not no because no. I I was <laughs> pretty <laughs> deep in it. Then you're <laughs> then you're letting the whole band down, and no one wants to let the band down. You know? Well, no. no one. You, if it gives you any uh, any solace, no one in band was ever mad at you. It's one of the funniest memories <laughs> in the years of band that I've ever done. Because after that, we. <laughs> well, there's a picture in the band room of you with a broken tuba, and it's like. Bah, 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 bah. Funnier no, on a real note. There's not. No, there's no, no. There's no, no, no picture. We should have taken a picture. However, we did throw it a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> So, the and best you didn't part. Invite Ryan. Nah, he think he I was. I guess you don't invite Ted Bundy to the <laughs> funeral. I'm the, I'm the one that who rides up on the motorcycle and looks at it from afar. You're, you're, you're Vin Diesel, and then further away is Mr. Martin watching you watching the funeral, and then further away. <laughs> so the funeral happened like in the quad at at the at the school, and the best part about this is that we have a full band that could play. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Whatever, whatever they play at taps. funerals. Yeah, yeah taps. taps. They can play taps. Yeah. And what I did is that me, just like Paul Bearers do, me and a few other bandmates. White gloves. 
We had we didn't have the white gloves. We the should blue, have blue latex. <laughs> we had the sousaphone in its case as if it were the casket, nice. and we walked it down an entire row of band people playing taps for us to bring it to. I don't know. I think just the band room <laughs> <laughs> because it was yes, thrown in the yes, dumpster yes. when you guys left. Mr. Martin was like, "That was weird." That was and it threw it in the trash. <laughs> He's like, "Man, band kids get weirder every year," and then just threw it in the trash. But truly, no, it was such a bonding moment for yeah. us because, I mean, it's a morale booster, the fact that we were able to take what other bands would probably be like, what the fuck? But, dude, I got a brand new tube out that thing. They're also, in our, specifically... Silver our, or gold? It was, Silver. Uh, it was or gold. 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 Nice. Yeah, the, gold, the, bra- the brass one, yeah. I was going to say, this what was really iconic about the year that we graduated was it didn't matter if you were played sports or if you were in band or if you did drama or, like, we all were friends and, like, cool with each other. So, like, no. it wasn't like, oh, my God, the, the band... The band kids musical instrument got run over by the jock, yeah, the by, jock. by the lead of the baseball team. How could this happen? Like, it's not one of the, if, dude. If this was like, in, I mean, if this was a TV show, it'd be way different. It'd be different if it was like the OC, someone's person. <laughs> if it was twenty four, uh, if it was someone's if it personal, was <laughs> if it was someone's with Kiefer Sutherland, if it was someone's Lost personal boys. saxophone or some yeah. shit, then I'd be like. I don't know what yeah. the logistics are with that. Nobody's like, this is my father's sousaphone. Yeah. <laughs> Can't replace those. No, but I mean, like, now, look at it. In retrospect, it's one of the best memories that I have. And honestly, by now, I'm sure the sousaphones they're using isn't even the one that you have. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> the one yeah. that you got is probably yeah. the oldest, dirtiest one. Probably, dude. Probably. How would you feel? Do you, is there playing How would you feel if I ran over your sousaphone? <laughs> <laughs> is there something of equivalence to you that you think you'd be like oh my god why did you run that over mm-hmm. like your favorite baseball bat i don't know uh, <laughs> my okay. my glove or my ukulele and ooh, mm. why and why <laughs> and why? also why uh, you, why it was also a gift and it was something like i need to be playing more i have eight o'clock i have a thing that's like go play your ukulele i don't do it no. <laughs> you have a reminder on your phone that says yeah. to play your ukulele. But yeah. at least I you just have, have the reminder. I haven't turned it off. But mm. because you don't want to give up the faith. Exactly. Yeah. In in high school, do you think your life would have been a little different if you hadn't done as many sports as you have? Or do you and do you think if not that, what would you have done for that creative outlet? Was it even an option not to do sports growing up? It was an option. Like I was never like force fed any of it. I just is what I was around, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. And I took a liking to it, and it was just fun. It was a fun release of energy, crazy, spontaneous energy. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, I probably would have taken some kind of martial art because I quit at an early age, but I got pretty high up there in uh, in the belt. I was a brown belt Wow! in karate. Kung Jung Musul. Have you ever had to use it? Um, <laughs> That's how he won that shirt. <laughs> Yo, no. Uh, um... I have not had to use it. No, oh, that's good. That's oh. good. I mean, you are a peaceful man. That's why. But you've been a bouncer before, and you've been a, you a, have. a an executive bodyguard. <laughs> well, you use some of that. I mean, at that point, you deal with a drunk, and you got to kick them out and whatnot, right? You got to kind of like snake around them. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> nah, you're, Excuse I, me. I was, a, I was a door host, and you just try to de-escalate the situation. Yeah. I see. Verbally. If you're fighting, you're doing your job wrong. That's true. Yeah, that In really... any kind of like... I don't know. How do you do it? What's, how do you DS? Unless you're a boxer. Imagine we're two drunkards coming into you. What was the establishment in which you were hosting <laughs> uh, the door? It was... Uh, we don't have to say it. It was on Broadway. Deja Vu. Deja Vu on <laughs> Broadway. Okay, imagine we are two drunkards. Christian, have you been, you've been there? No, I don't know. I don't know. You ever been to Deja Vu? No, I've never been to Deja Vu. Why? Tell the truth now, Christian. I don't I have tell no clue truth, what Deja Vu is. Now, Broadway and SF? Yeah, mm-hmm. San Francisco. I have no clue what that is. All right, well. Why? What does that mean? We'll take you there next week. Okay, I'm down. You still I'm got the, the plugs? You still got the connects? No, I do not. So imagine we're two drunkards coming in. I want you to authentically uh, treat it as if like you had to de-escalate the situation. <laughs> it's just that this deja vu. Yeah, how are we doing today, guys? Doing Hi, good. Hey, this guy. This guy stepped in my my wings. 
You stepped in your wing. That's he too bad. He stepped on my wing. Is, a- is, gonna- f- is that going to ruin your night? Yes. It's on accident. I'm going to fight him. I just I offered to buy new wings, but he didn't want to buy. He didn't want me to buy him new wings. Oh, where'd you guys go for wings? Here's he, my ID. He he. he I'm do I give it to that. you? <laughs> yeah, you're not trying to get in here tonight. Or do you want wings? To. Do you want wings? Do you guys have wings here? We do not. But there's a great place right down, right Italian cafe down the way if you oh, guys want it. Okay, okay. we'll get wings just go, there. Just okay, go there. And that's how you do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just de-escalated the situation. <laughs> Christian, Deja Vu is a, uh, an adult establishment. A strip club. Yeah. yeah. Can I not say? Well, yeah, that's fine. That exists. We're just trying to be classy Shout about it. Shout out to the sex workers out there. Uh, dance, uh, dancers? Strippers aren't dancers. sex workers. They're dancers. Okay, you call them dancers. Yeah, workers. okay. Yeah. Wow. You that was an irrelevant hey, statement from that. Like, you want to roll yourself that? back a little no. bit here? Why is, there a, why is there a stigma with sex workers that I can't call dancers sex workers? Because they're not. Dancing isn't a sex work. Touche. I'm not going to go dive deeper into this. Can I? Can, I, can, we, can, can we stop? Full stop. Why, you got to pee? No, I want to ask Ryan a question. Yeah, what's up? Go, go right Ryan, now. you play baseball in the Netherlands. For mm-hmm. those baddies who don't know, because we are getting our, um, you know, our friend on. But uh, I want to know, I would love to know how you got to the Netherlands. But it's not like I know you took an airplane. But I mean, like, how did you get on a team? And Christian was trying to, was the team the Tigers? Is the team the name of the Tigers? Uh, we... Do you have a name? We didn't have a necessarily a mascot, but we had it was UVV stand for Utrecht Voetbal, and I couldn't remember the other two V's exactly. Mm-hmm. On but it's U, UVV red and blue, and I was contacted. Um, shout out Peter Reyes because mm-hmm. uh, he has been doing this overseas thing, and he did it for a number of years. Encouraged me. I just slacked and never like really went through with getting my passport. Mm-hmm. And finally, when I did, and I made a profile, and I got contacted by a guy in Poland first, in France, and then in uh, in the Netherlands. And I finally, when the Netherlands dude was so like like persistent, I was like, "Yeah, I'll see you about how long it'll take." And I was like, "It was like five months out," mm-hmm. and he hit me up in March of last year in february of last year and i had to get it by april may and it was like five yeah. months out and then i got uh a very close uh, uh, uh baseball uh mastermind of mine it was like i'm gonna kind of shoot myself in the foot but if you book a flight and then contact the passport agency in sf for closest to you it uh will fast forward the process because once you have a ticket and you go to the consulate yeah. of wherever you're going. And essentially it was for work, and I was very blessed with the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Very, very fortunate. And Is that a – I mean, so you made a profile on a website? Yeah. yeah baseball Jobs Overseas, shout out. And, wow. um That's how it works? Can, yeah. So somebody graduated this high is, school. This is all like, information I got from PD. You just, if you play baseball and you graduate, could you make a profile and yeah. then you want to – one hundred percent. What are the prerequisites? I mean, Do they just awesome. like review some stats of your your baseball career prior to What's that? What's stopping yeah. somebody from reference? Christian signing up as opposed to? Uh, you do have they do have to ha- kind of have a, a trail of like where you have been, where you played, and and by statistics, it, okay. it is thing out. Yeah. And they're allowed to call a reference and yeah. to just like confirm that you had played here and that you were yeah. a decent player. Yeah, the the website they do they have guys working that do a, a brilliant job. And is there an audition process, or do you go there? It's and called tryouts and sports. Try, yeah, it's called tryouts and sports. I'm, I, I, fucking, I, I join yeah. singing things, and I do some dancing stuff. What kind stuff. of auditions? And the costume changes. Well, How many costumes? Do you bring a headshot, yeah. and is there... Okay, no, but what's the, what's the try, what are tryouts like? Coming from a guy that has never really dabbled in sports, I'm curious as to what that is like. Uh, what, be more specific? Just tryouts. Is it, is it grueling? How do you, do you get on Do you get team? nervous? So I went to one tryout in uh, 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 Pittsburgh for the Pacific Association. Mm-hmm. And then Peter and I both were signed. He was, went to the Admirals, and I went to Sonoma Stompers. And our teams ended up meeting in the championship, like in the final. His mm. team won. Unfortunately, I sh- injured my shoulder and, like, kind of I had surgery and everything. Wow. And just was playing, you know, Sunday league, having mm-hmm. fun and working. And then when this guy called me up last year, I was like, I mean, Peter, this has been coming for a while. Yeah. And I was like, this is no better time than now. Like, I'm not getting any younger. 
So I did my work on my end. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll pay for my first flight and everything. And, and I did that, proved myself. And we won a the league championship. That's incredible, man. And going back on Monday, the 24th. So that's, I remember the last time we spoke with you, or maybe there was some, uh, we hung out uh, in passing and whatnot. But you when you came to our old studio, Back in 2019, we had like a deep talk, and I think you were talking about you were talking about your passion for baseball mm-hmm. and just doing the damn thing. Mm-hmm. And what's incredible is kind of having a recollection of that fucking three and a half years ago, yeah. and jump forwarding uh, to your moment right now. How does that feel that you are you are chasing your dream and? that you get to travel for it and that it's something that yeah. you've done since you were young. Yeah, there's obviously no dreams of like the major leagues, you know. I it's uh it's an experience for yeah. sure and I'm trying to just enjoy it while I have the opportunity. Sure. And see other places than I've known for my whole life and try to discover like basically who I am I and and what else is out there and what's around and home's always going to be home. Where have you traveled to because of this? I went. I lived in the Netherlands, and then got a week uh, seeing PD in Austria. Yeah, mm, yeah. And then uh, three days with a couple teammates in France, and then uh, Belgium. Belgium a couple times, and flew out of Belgium. Of those places, what's your favorite? Austria. I gotta say Austria. Wow. Why is, why is that? It's beautiful. Vienna was amazing. Mm-hmm. Any sausages? Vienna sausages. That's the only thing I know about. Like, might be very the, ignorant. Of. It's crazy. Like you, like, <laughs> I, I think, I think, Vienna. I think he ordered a, a, a plate, like a, a full plate, at a restaurant. It was just like different links, and it was just like. Are they known for their sausages other than the ones that come in the can? <laughs> yeah, Here, right. In the slimy can. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a staple. Okay. Wow. Like fries and mayo is in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Belgium you dip your fries in a mayo? Or a frikandel or a... a, a frikandel. Yeah, croquettes and... Frikandel is like a fried, like fried sausage. Have uh, you learned languages uh, or like any dialects out there? Well, in, you were speaking overseas? a little bit of Dutch um, earlier too. I'm doing some Duolingo Dutch languages yeah. or Dutch lessons. Yeah. My brother's ex-wife is from the Netherlands, yeah. lives in the Netherlands uh, now. You look her up. Uh, no, that's the... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I didn't mean Whoa. it. Like, no, 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 no. no. Um, yeah, no, and it's uh the Dutch language is seems oh. like it's so complicated. It's like a German who woke up in England but uh, has a really phlegmy cough. It's great. It's <laughs> graceful. Maybe I don't graceful? know. I would say graceful as opposed it's to phlegmy. like German. You're just assuming that everyone has phlegm in It's Have you how do they make the G sound in the it's Netherlands? <laughs> it's Van Gogh. It's oh. but it's, it's not Van Gogh. I would, I would oh. say Van Gogh. I would say in my very brief encounter with German, it's 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 not as tough as German, but it is it's they say it's more similar to English than a lot of languages. Yeah. yeah. And I'm picking up on that with my lessons. But uh what's hello in Dutch? Hello in Dutch. Hello. <laughs> hello. Oi, oi. 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 Hey. Oh, why? <laughs> oh, you I almost like we or not oh, we, but interesting. Oh no, it's the doy, the doy, the doy. When you run into <laughs> someone, that's what I call Christian, the doy. Yeah, the doy. Say fuck you, bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what? And you're able to get by. Let's say no, no. Oh, you no. need someone you, with you. If you you couldn't go to a restaurant, sit down. No. So the beautiful thing about it they is they all speak English. Starting at like eight years old, they learn it in, in school. Nice. That's what I hear. Because the Netherlands is always has been a port city, port t- country. So Rotterdam in the Netherlands mm. is the biggest European port. Yeah. Everything goes Rotterdam. through everything goes through the Netherlands. Yeah. So it makes sense that, you know, they speak multiple languages by the time they're, you know. Yeah. Um it's like a, a mandatory part of the curriculum because in the Philippines it's like that too. Um People joke around that if I were to go to the Philippines, I'll fit right in because I obviously know everything about the culture. What? But I'd fit right in because everyone because knows you would English. Enjoy it, and I would enjoy it too. Thank you. You're so sweet to me. I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right that's, out of the bottle. Right out of the bottle. What? What is the kind of? What's the culture in the Netherlands? What's their sense of humor? Yeah. What's the? What's Did the, you fit right in? What's the most surprising thing you saw, and what's the hmm. most like? So they're very direct. They're very kind, but direct. 
Um, if they want to ask for something that you have or something, not, not necessarily an agree way or like give me, but like, uh, hey, come over and give me help. Give me your help, you know, or come over here and you're going to work this time or, or you're going to help me, uh, you know, yeah, go up, upstairs. I was like, all right, you know. And Not like a, would you mind going upstairs and seeing if, yeah. It's a lot that, of things are statements. Yeah, but, they're, no they're very, but they're, they have it to a point in their economics where they're, they're put at a sense of ease. Like they have, they make enough money to survive, like plenty of money to survive. They, um, they have designed holiday vacation, like time, and mm. it's, it's an ample amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We hear those Europeans get a lot of money. They, they're it's, burning down Paris right now because they moved up the retirement <laughs> from 63 to 65. Yeah. They're literally tearing Those down Paris. extra two years fuck shit up. Really. I mean, I get honestly, I'm on the side of the people writing, but I also think like... <laughs> I think it's the way that the president there did it's it. It's the way they did it. I Again, I Just completely agree with what they're saying. Authoritarian, like, I'm going to change this now. Boom. But on Fox News, it's because they're lazy folks and they're... <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what, what is the... You... Were you? Was it difficult for you to make friends there? Was there a culture uh, gap that you I can't had to kind of bridge? You having difficulty no. making friends? <laughs> they, I tried to just kind of like feel the the pulse on how people are there, sure. and, and tried my best to assimilate. But they are they're freaking hardworking people, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they get to it, and it was just. But they're very easy going. Mm-hmm. They're real people, and it was. Very pleasant to just be. Oh, luckily, I had a I had a team of guys that are like taking me on, but like, they were forced to take me on. Yeah, but were like you the only American on the team. There was two or three, two or two three, or three yeah. Yeah. and you're uh, their favorite team. American. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're not the answer. You're not the answer. <laughs> no, Barack Obama's their favorite American. <laughs> um, was there ever was there any kind of like was there ever a person that you were just like, oh, I don't vibe with that person, I don't like that person, and was it chalked up to the fact of like we're just different worlds? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally different worlds, totally different um, types of people. You're getting sides of the world, sides of even the the country here, yeah. like you know, different Americans as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. wow. And so you're really put into a, a, a petri dish. Yeah, of... d- like Australian, like a couple of Australian buddies that were do. They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. Wow. Just, they play baseball in Australia. Yep. But Big the time. ball goes the other way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Spins in the opposite direction. <laughs> it's a toilet joke. <laughs> Why? Because they're toilets. Yeah, I've the heard that before. The yeah. That's nuts. There's a place in the world in South America. South America or Ecuador. It goes or straight, goes, goes straight down. Well, they're, they're, they have like a demonstration <laughs> on this like old, uh, I don't want to say Aztec or Mayan or anything, but that type of stone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, surface and they have like a line where the equator is Mm -hmm. and it doesn't there's a there's a demonstration look it up and then you go a little bit south and a little bit north and it does it spins opposite direction wow that's insane to me i always think not to get too distracted but in australia it's very common because christmas is in the summertime Mm. so when they have they when they have christmas they like go to the pool and have fun and like enjoy the beach but everywhere in media and it's like it's christmas it's cold it's cold it's snow santa but already we're in the our christmas yeah it's cold but it's not even snowing we don't no yeah we don't even have a white christmas Mm -hmm. does it freak them out if they uh no they see it they understand they see the media american media dominates the world it does so that's got to be like they understand it on tv I don't know. It's just not how it is, Mike. No, no, no. it ain't. Would you settle uh, in, the <laughs> Nether- uh, in the Netherlands? Sure, why not? Ah, you're so easy going. There's I, like nothing that's pulling you either I'm, here or there. I mean, I'm definitely pulled here. Okay. Uh, for sure. And it'll probably will end up here. But I'm just trying to make the most of the time I have there. Gotcha. Do you, uh, and you think you're going to settle here. What is it about the Bay Area that keeps you so grounded here? Because you. Knowing you, and no, yeah, yeah, because you're now a world traveler and you've lived all over the world. Now, mm. what is it that makes ba- the Bay Area the spot to be like? This is home. I don't necessarily know it's the Bay Area. I mean, mm. I would, I would like to hope so, but things have to fall in order for that to happen. Sure, sure. And it's like, then when you said here, did that mean the general U.S.? Yeah, he- West Coast. West I want to say West Coast. East Coast, you can't do. I haven't spent enough time to know. You know, where in the East Coast? Bless you. Uh, 
That's about it for you. <laughs> that's, I, that's why I stopped the second one. Uh, East Coast, uh, where have you been, and why Ooh, doesn't entice you as much? Washington D.C. Okay. Um, Washington D.C. I stopped in New York and Boston. Okay. Um, not very long at all. Um, and you didn't like it there while you were there? It was nice. It was pleasant. You know. Mm-hmm. I love. I think New York City is the greatest city in the world. Oh my! My question also, and yeah, we've had that talk. And New York City pros and cons. I think a little more cons for me than pros. But, but it just it's not your vibe. It's not that's your all. city. It's nothing yeah. bad about it. It's my just how I. Oh man! Live if there. you're New York in the '70s, right, Greenwich Village, you would have been right in there, Let's hanging see, out with Bob I, Dylan. If I spent more time there and like found the yeah, nuggets, you gotta do a couple charming. local things. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but okay. In terms of the Netherlands, uh, what is the 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 income to l- livability? The like house, you the know, ratio. Like, What's the ratio? Yeah. So like, you for example, th- here in California, they say we don't get paid enough because uh, it's it's much more expensive. Price of living. Thank you so much. Mm. For that question. A price of living. <laughs> I would say can't put a number on it, but I would say that they. Everyone struggles, but they don't. They don't seem to be phased because there's things in order there that just they don't have. You don't see homeless people. You don't like things are very neat and clean, and it's like even like the so-called uh, uh, ghetto there. Like it's mm-hmm. it's very like everyone still seems to be getting by and not hating each other because they their lives are miserable or anything like that. Mm-hmm. That's, That's the good. best kind of gauge I can yeah, put for on sure. it. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I think America, um, not to go too deep in a socio political way because that's not what the show is at all mm. but i think america specifically has these areas and these cities and towns and communities that are so overrun yeah. for generations mm. of crime it doesn't matter what the minority is uh and that's so eclectic to america where in other countries yeah they have hard places and hard times but especially in europe i mean they make it very clear uh, you know that they do it differently than they do in america mm. yeah. and so you know i wouldn't expect you to get to Amsterdam or The Hague or anything and be like, wow, yeah, that, this looks like a street in San Francisco. I mean, that there's a reason why everybody goes to San Francisco and is like, damn. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, that is the uh, – it's not the norm. It should be so uh, shocking yeah. because yeah. other places should be. It, yeah, San Francisco has that wow factor. All these places have that wow factor because they're their own city. Like, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you sure you resemble or, or – Make similarities to different infrastructure, architecture, all that stuff. But. Where are you again in uh, Utrecht. Netherlands? In Utrecht. U- Utrecht, yeah. And in Utrecht, uh, what is that? If there was like an equivalent in California that we could mm. equate it to, so we could get a better perception Ooh. of what is it? The Fresno? Not oh. at all. Like there's there's nothing really like it in California. Mm. Um, is it small? Like a village, or is it a town? <laughs> is it a city? Just, five houses where the team lives. There's a Cra- a boatload of canals and bridges. Yeah. Huh? Um, there's a lot of castles, hmm. and there's castles. a lot of like old oh. architecture, but also some new. Like I want to say, not the Space Needle, but they have like a tower similar to it. Okay. okay. In Amsterdam, it has like a ride on top, kind of like in uh, 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 I think Reno, Vegas. Reno. Reno, the one in Reno. Interesting. Oh, okay, yeah. But I'm not, still, so not that not that tall, but it's just got rides up at the top. Um, boating, biking is a big, big yeah. time. The biking in the Netherlands is more popular than driving cars. What do you do? What's your what's your what's your hobbies when you're not at practice? When you're not doing a game? When you're not? Probably biking. Um, definitely being by the water, mm. walking around and just trying to see just new places. It yeah. You yeah. seem like someone that could survive on those survivor, the survival shows. Not necessarily Survivor. That seems like you're... you're I think Ryan would be yeah. immaculate at Survivor. Sorry, honestly. I was scared to say it because you were, I thought I knew you were going to be like, but I'll fucking win Survivor. Yeah. I, Ryan yeah. would be great at Survivor. I also would be great at Survivor, but there's different ways to play the game. Let's say 100%. alone, the, the, the survival show alone. Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. Out in the cold, with X amount of items of oh, your choice, yeah. what are you bringing? Because I feel like you could bring that ukulele and you'll you'll, you'll win. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Ten personal items? Something like that. So I don't know. Ten ukulele. I was like max at two, one or two. That's I nice. can look it up, but no, well, it's, a, it's a good amount. We're giving you five. 
for this podcast, we're giving you five. Sure, five. Mm. What, do you, what five things are you taking? Fire starter. That, that's not uh, five personal items. Five personal items. Uh, Why is a fi- fire starter just comprised of six items like or something? Five shit? comfort. You could just call them comfort items. It is 10 items that they get. And it's uh, so contestants each select 10 items of survival gear from a pre approved list of 40 oh. and are issued a kit of standard equipment, clothing. So, like, you and- can't just go there and be like, I want a 50 cal desert eagle. And then they're just like, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, here, do you want to get, read up the 40 items that you could choose from? And then you choose 10 items from that and yeah. can you survive? How about yeah. you give them the list of 40 so you're not just listing And the fire off 40 starters things. off, you can make a little bow starter, you know? Here, okay, fire starter. You get a knife. Both, you definitely no, get a knife. I was gonna say knife is my number one. Yeah, a hatchet. You have to. Are you? Have you gone hunting before? Uh, once. Was what, it what t- did tough you hunt? for you? What? Sorry. What did you hunt? What did I hunt? Boar. Boar. Ooh. Okay. Um. And I kill a boar. There's too many of them. I can't. I don't think I could kill a living thing. Mm. I don't Except know if I could fucking do the, bug. I'll I don't know if I could do the Ted Nugent thing in Texas where they're like. Machine gunning boars out the window of a helicopter. No. But yeah, I would. no, that's crazy. But See, I would like yeah. to shoot a machine gun out the yeah, window that, of a helicopter. Though. Just that, yeah, just that. that <laughs> and that's, that even ducks. even that is a sensitive subject. Not for me necessarily, but I've heard um, as a witness, like like friends from Texas and friends from other places. They're like, you guys do that, and you don't like even go and eat it. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, I could go to families. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean that's. I think if push comes to shove. And if I had to kill something, I'm using every bit of that animal mm-hmm. to, you know, I'll figure out what to do with the bone, yeah. mash it up and turn that into, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just speaking gelatin. of my ass right now. Yeah. Gelatin. It's a turn to gelatin, gelatin and gelatin. I'll make strawberry flavored jello. And, uh, uh, yeah, definitely a cape. <laughs> definitely. Am I doing good? <laughs> the, the, the horns from the boar using that to probably kill my next meal. Bro, I just want the pieces of meat that I can eat. I don't want the rest of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Send that to the glue factory. I don't give a fuck. Okay. What are the other items? Let's say there's that, that's, that counts as one fire starter. Knife mm-hmm. your no, kid. not even the fire starter. If, if it's only five and yeah. it's from a list of 40, do you want me to read it real fast? Yeah, sure. Give one pair of high leg hunting boots, one pair of waterproof Arctic winter boots, one t-shirt, one fleece wool shirt. Okay, there's a lot of clothes on here. Yeah, and so and the thing is, is like, do you want Arctic boots or do you want work boots? And it's like, yeah, fuck, I guess I want Arctic that's true. boots. Two pairs of thermal underwear. Thermal underwear is part of that list. I can't just bring That's that. one of my things for sure. That's nuts. One insulated parka style jacket. Yes. I need. I need. One pair of eyeglasses. Shut the fuck up. I can't this counts. This counts? For you, it does. That's messed up. I got to get contacts. Okay, uh, anyway. Dude, but contacts are now four things. Because uh, it's one each plus solution in a case. That does suck. That does suck. I can't just walk around with contacts the entire day. It's a windy day. Uh, <laughs> your eyes like, would hurt. God. You're there for 40 days. By 40 days, they need an eye doctor. to. Get... <laughs> I can't be acting like Velma out in fucking Iceland. Just my like, glasses. My, my glasses. glasses. All right. Ryan, four Ryan. more items <laughs> of your own curated list. All right. Uh, a horse, a flare to get own, out of here, a helicopter, <laughs> uh, a knife. Because I'm not badass enough to make one out of a nail, dude. Found no. Oh, oh. yeah. That was a deep cut. That was a deep cut. Man, was... a knife. God dang. I'm, I'd like a book on how to kill animals with my hands. A knife. You'd read that book. Interesting. Uh, this is what you do. Uh, you see an animal. What is that? A a a, a pig. All right, pig. The pig hunting. This one? Is how it, oh, what is that? A squirrel? Oh, squirrel. It teaches you how to. That would be helpful. Yeah. Chicken. Uh, a knife, elk. a bow, a probably a jacket. And... <laughs> I love the embarrassment behind the jacket. You need the jacket, dude. But the jacket yeah. is like a really thin, like uh, Echo, yeah. uh, Mark Echo jacket. Hide. It's probably hide. Um, and then shoes. Shoes, I guess that's got to be you on it. To. Yeah, boots, Arctic, work boots, Arctic work boots. boots, bingo. Work boots. Man, that's nuts. You know, but don't... no socks. I noticed you didn't pick socks. I did not. So um, you're going to go raw dog in these work boots, bro? Uh, make, a little mo- <laughs> make a little moccasin insert kind of thing, you know what I mean? A Can mixer. you climb a tree? Like if you had to go get close Can to you climb tree? a tree? Is this a dumb question? I mean, <laughs> I just love well, that you, question. You were born in 93, weren't you? <laughs> yes. I What? What did we well, say? Great. I, you... I was born in 92. Oh. oh, you're the monkey, baby. Oh, oh we're you're the rat. Yeah, Ooh. that's okay. So you got that. I don't know what they <laughs> say about the rats. Yeah, rats are smart and they're collectors.
writers and they know how to work in groups. I just watched The Sopranos, so that word has a completely different meaning to me that I actually hate it. So he's a hero in this house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, that's you are the type of person I would want to bring on a camping trip because I think I could rely on you to survive. Ryan's the in case of a zombie apocalypse, getting Tepity. Ryan's truck. But then Alejandro's the type of guy. Don't stop. <laughs> this guy's on the side of the road. <laughs> Help! I broke my leg and my no, wife's pregnant. No. If you were that guy, I'd be like, I'm dying for sure. Your wife's pregnant. He's always up to some mischief. Yes. No, I just want a crown. I just want to wear a crown. Yeah. Um, no, that's fucking awesome. Like, that's a. Uh, have you always been this kind of. Growing up, you were more stimulated by outdoor activities, I'm yep. assuming. Rather than staying inside playing video games type of thing. 100%. What do you, uh, what do you uh, give credit to that for? Uh, my folks, for sure. Both your parents? Yep. My, bro- my, my older brothers, 100%. Yep. Mm. What did you guys do? What was your childhood like? Uh, getting beat to a bloody pulp. No. <laughs> <laughs> they just locked the Fuck? doors. They just locked the doors. So you know, no, uh, there's a, a big enough age gap that it was just like, Going to their games, watching their games, and like being around, like swinging daisies and stuff like that, mm. and just exploring, but like close enough that you hear action and you're like emulating. Don't you know, go too like, far. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what do you mean by swinging? So you're swinging daisies. What is that? Plant. Like you little plant, not daisies. Oh, and you just wanted the, to be outside. What's the What's the little one with the little white things that fall Dan, off? Dan, 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 dandelions. Dandelions. Is that dandelions. Dandelions. I daffodils. No I think they're the same thing. I should know this. But you would do that outdoors. Not an herbologist. During your at, brother's games. Yeah, at a young age, and yep, and then like but getting thrown into karate, piano, and not I just not just like thrown karate, in, but like piano. like go try this. <laughs> And, and kind of like, do you like it? Like, yeah, I do. Like, meet people. Like, yeah, it's cool. And, and learn things. Cool. Yeah. They're trying to plug and play and see what worked best for you. No. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Christian, do you ever wish that your parents put you in more sports when you were a kid? Not really. I'm very like, happy with how I turned out. I know. I know you are. I, I, I don't even know why I asked. But like, do you want me to answer that differently? No, I'm just saying like, because like everybody grows up playing like so- soccer. Did you play soccer as a little boy? Scared of getting the ball hit in my face. Wow. <laughs> but you didn't like articulate that to your parents though. They just never signed you up. They never signed me up. They were it's the the very stereotypical Asian parents of you're going you're <laughs> you're going to play violin type right, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you did play the violin. And I did play the violin. And you know, <clears throat> you're, uh, they wanted me so badly to play the piano, but I chose violin. You chose oh, karate piano. No. <laughs> <laughs> um but well, I did phone, no? Xylophone is a karate piano. <laughs> that's really that's good. Um well, my I did actually play some sports growing up like recess Basketball? was definitely a time for me to get physical um <laughs> let's get physical, Come here, kids. physical. <laughs> just push around no because i would do i would play kickball do you guys remember or kick back so without yep. the rules of baseball yeah, just over the line yep so it's just yeah there's a line of kids over here there's a line of kids over there and the coolest kids were the ones that they could kick it the highest or kick it the furthest i was the kid that could kick it the second highest. Nice. And so I found a dopamine <laughs> rush. Yes. Thank you. It didn't travel far. It just went straight up, straight down, and I got enough kids to be like, that's not bad. And you were pretty consistent, like the trajectory going up. And yes. A, a nice. Yes. Definitely. There was consistency with it. Um, and no, you know, not every kid needs to strive to be Babe Ruth. Some no. kids need to be... War Machine. <laughs> I'm fine with being Don Cheadle uh, and someone else being Tony Stark, for sure. Uh, I definitely, I did that and well, I guess this doesn't count as sports, but because of my body there, you know, you, do you remember, uh, on Sumo the wrestling? Exactly. Did you guys do something like that on your guys' uh, cement? There was like circles. Whoa, no, no, nope, not we on used cement. Those circles for dodgeball. That's for dodgeball. Oh, we did that for sumo wrestling. Oh, <laughs> you guys had fight club in the third grade. <laughs> we were pushing each other. No, no one stopped us. And I was just the like, yard duties didn't blow the whistle. No, but they blew, blew the whistle. The whistle. <laughs> they blew the whistle on me chewing gum on on the playground. And that, how did they that catch was... that? What kind of eagle eye, hawk eyed motherfucker is like? Because I was a fat kid, so they knew I was going to be eating something. <laughs> I remember in elementary school playing Foursquare. That was the yep. game that I played. That's the yep. thing. What was your elementary school thing? Tetherball, uh, you tetherball kid? Kickball, tetherball, four states? square. Did you guys ever play the states game? Yeah, a little bit. Every once in a while. What's the states game? At my elementary school, we had the 50 states painted yep. out. 
and you would like start on one state and be like, everybody run to Florida, and you'd have to like try and tag somebody. The last person, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. That's everybody educational. Everybody run to Nebraska. No. Nope. You didn't play that? I did. Oh, you did? I did every once in a while, but like, it was like chaotic, and my brain's chaotic enough. I just want to kick it and run, or, or one thing, like tether the ball, throw it around the pole. like mm-hmm. Throw it around the pole. Yep. Were you popular <laughs> in elementary school? Do one more time. Do that so I could zoom in. When I this. Oh, damn. Slide you did ball. work at Deja Vu. Oh, he's getting Deja Vu. <laughs> um, yeah, were you were you kind of the shit in elementary school? Because you're the shit now. Uh, no comment. I don't know. That's uh, everyone's uh, perspective. What elementary <laughs> school did you go to? Mary Farmer. Mary Farmer. Ariana right, Lagrimis and Matt Brown and Walter Selvey, Clarence mm. Jordan. Like, I'm forgetting so many people. But, like, it, we were tight. We were tight. Wow. I, was, I was a Joe Henderson kid. That's where I met my girlfriend. Coy Fisher. Coy Fisher. Heck mm. yeah. Wow. It's kind of weird knowing that you guys grew up in Benicia and coming in as a, essentially an outsider. Did you have a certain perception of us when you first met us? Not initially. Not initially? Indifferent. I think we, I want to say we I ran into you at St. Dominic's first. Mm. You Part. ran into my tuba. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first, time, first, first time meeting the guy. First time meeting the guy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. You did play trombone. Um. <laughs> Okay, so St. Dominic's at church. I want to say yes. Was when, when we first started. Jesus brought us all Send together. Us <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then you guys first met how? Sixth I, grade? I, I don't remember you, you in basketball? middle school. Did I, you play basketball? We, no, I didn't. I did. I was on the wrestling team. We wrestled together. In the sixth grade. Oh, really? Because that was the only year we, that we had a wrestling team. Yeah, well, who was better? Mr. Tessier was our yes. instructor. And this guy, Mr. Garcia. This guy freaking had all the... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I, I came in with a belt. I had a mask on, and they're like, "No, that kind of wrestling." And I was like, "Well, then I'm out of here." I really want to believe that that's the truth. That you came in with a luchador mask. One hundred percent. No, I, I, I did like to. I did like wrestling because my brother was on the wrestling that's team right. and on the wrestling Shout team in Matt. high school and stuff. And so, you know, I wanted to learn how to wrestle and that's stuff. That's crazy. But I also remember, if you look at that photo of that wrestling team from middle school, every kid is like. The levels of puberty is very clear, right? And then you see my, and then you see me, and it's like that's a baby boy, that's a baby <laughs> bird who just got ha out of an egg. Like he still has I look so nice, placenta on him, and so like <sighs> that. That's the crazy thing about middle school sports, though, right? Is yeah. that that's around the time when people have different growth spurts because it's mm. not, it's yeah, we, we can't all line it up in the seventh grade. So that I mean, did you did you have a late or early growth spurt? Early, like yeah, how early? Like uh, seventh grade grade. Like I, I was told by some girl in PE. She's like, "Oh my god, your leg is like a blanket because of the hair on <laughs> it." Yeah. Whoa, your legs like a blanket. Well, uh, I remember the first time I got hair on my legs. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I got mine pretty fast. I remember I had like, I don't know. And I, feel, growing up with a bunch of cousins that were girls, they should have like really set me up for success, but they just let me rock the. The stash and unibrow for hell a long. You gotta learn. You gotta learn. Yeah, when I first came uh, to Benicia nice. in the seventh grade, no one, no wonder it was hard for me to talk to women. Mm. I just didn't clean myself up right. I was a clean boy, but mm. they didn't. No one taught me. How I to wasn't clean, clean up. in the seventh grade. Never brushed my teeth. Never took a shower. You're kidding, really? I had braces in sixth and seventh grade. You sixth did? to beginning of seventh. Yeah, I had braces all throughout middle school. Mm. Oh, a little brace face. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Damn. Um, just going through Invisalign right now. Still been doing it for like about five Ooh. years. How is that? Five uh, years? Yeah, I'm I'm bad about Get it. Get this man a sponsor. By Invisalign? What? That would help a Smile lot. Smile Direct Club claims that they can fix your teeth in six months. Well, I had, not only is it just my teeth, but it's the positioning of my jaw. You so. need a new jaw. I need a new job. Can you give me one? I remember mm. in the sixth grade, I mean, when you go to the orthodontist, they don't pull any punches. And I remember in the sixth grade, my orthodontist being like, his jaw is too small for his upper jaw. And my parents being like, well, what can we do about that? And he's What's like, your upper jaw? Upper jaw? Lower jaw. <laughs> oh, I'm just like, and he's oh, like, he's like yeah, I'm my like, lower jaw upper is here? too small. And they're like, what can we do about that? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> being in the sixth grade and being like, I guess I'll always have an overbite then. You should just... Yeah, your mandible and your uh, maxilla. Oh, wow. Oh. What the fuck? Well, you're, asking, you're, asking, your mind. you're asking earlier about you know my what I get nerdy about. 
So you said you're bodies. You like you're a body man. You said your physical physical health and and what just anatomy. Yeah, I don't take my own uh, 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 um, advice all the time, but like I know those are the best people to give advice. You know how like how it how I was taught, and I remember just like how of like the the kinesthetics and I, I like I love it. No, keep going. I I'm I guess I'm very OCD and meticulous, and I'm like so like. I see that I worked in physical therapy for two years and I'm like, I wish I knew more like stuff in terms of like palpating and fixing stuff. And I always wanted to be like a chiropractor, athletic trainer, something like that. And just have kind of gone with the flow. So up to Hmm. this point, would you say your OCD ever translates into something uh, synonymous to like health anxiety? Not so, like, do you ever not, get worried about No, that? not so much. It's just like I try to eat healthy, try to drink lots of water. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm learning to eat a lot more vegetables and not picking anything out. And But you're not necessarily to the point where you're counting your macros no. or counting your calories. Mm-mm. You've you always don't had like a... weigh the tuna fish and like. Have you ever been fat? It's my no, no he question. hasn't. We've seen him for most of his life. This is true. I don't know. There's He's like had a... a six pack since he was in the fifth grade. <sighs> do you have a six pack right now? Oh, no. He has an eight pack right it's now. A l- <laughs> it's more than that, <laughs> dude. Um, because it's, uh, I think because you grew up just being outdoorsy and athletic and doing sports that really helped your metabolism. Even because yeah. you're you're slightly older than we are, right? Because you mm, few months, <laughs> yeah. few months. But yeah, just yeah, you're the uh, monkey. I'm like hyperactive, so I'm always like whatever I'm eating, I'm just burning off and um, haven't really had like felt the need to count macros and all that and. Just try to have a balanced diet and are you cut back um, on the ice cream? You eat lots of ice cream. I used to. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. That's your guilty pleasure. Ben and Jerry's, yeah, Chunky mm, Monkey. That's you know, real good. It makes me toot. Yeah, <laughs> that makes you toot. Are you yeah. lactose or something? I guess I Clearly. must be. I try to take my pro- probiotics. You know, and you are a little a kimchi. Man. You know, I've dabbled. I've dabbled in some kimchi. I dabble in the kimchi. I like it, the kimchi. Not, yep. like, not my thing. You don't like it, the kimchi. Not the actual fermented cabbage. You don't cabbage. like it, the kimchi. Oh, thank you. That's pseudo-racial, but right. I'll let it pass. You don't like it, the kimchi. Um, do you, what's your, what's your um, workout uh, process like now that you are... We go to the gym right now. Do I mean, being a part of like a baseball team, What's what is it just making sure that... Like while I'm over there and everything? Yeah, or? when you're like in the thick of it. Uh, so we're going over there. We have a, we have membership, and it's right by the field. And I'll try to go in for two, three days a week. Um, four days I'm at the field, and I try to get like good plyometrics, good like functional movement type stuff on the field. And then in the workout, like I try to go either Monday or Hump Day is legs, mm-hmm. um, and then upper body i try to do my pulls like tuesday uh push push and cores every single day cores are, like my I, I have like yeah and i have uh try to keep like what is called a closed kinetic chain can um, you expand on that yeah so it's just like a lot of people go and do like leg uh, extensions with yeah. like resistance hardly ever do we do that other than kicking a soccer ball mm. And it puts a lot of uh, stress on your patellar tendon. Like extensions do. Like leg extensions. Like okay. there, there are a time and a place for it, but I would say more so just doing uh, like leg press squats mm. uh, for leg days. I like a lot of rows for back pull, um, push. I'm um, you know bench press, dumbbell press, uh, even like uh, dumbbell flies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then try to have like just uh, active recovery. I, I tell a lot of people like that I'm just giving advice to, but it's not in a professional like level. Like, make sure you're doing something and staying active. Yeah. Um, even when you're feeling sore, because there are oh, countless yeah. days when I'm like, God, I don't feel like moving. Like I have like back issues are already starting up. So like that's why I'm. You're try- feeling your age. A little yeah, bit? and like I try to keep my hamstrings stretched and try to. Just that's why I'm so meticulous on how I'm moving as well. Like I try to keep my my spine aligned and just my butt and feet underneath me. Otherwise, something's gonna go out. Damn. Um, but if I do those things right, like it's gone out probably one or two times. Damn. Boy. 
uh, a not a year, but <laughs> one or two times in the last five years, probably. I'm just like it just locks up, mm-hmm. and so I had that from an injury a long time ago, and I I try my best just to move properly if I'm going to move. That's good. You're very ergonomic. I did because you know what injury <laughs> feels like. Yeah. You yeah. know what? Any? How about uh, in terms of fitness? What usually correlates with that? Uh, at the same time, is body dysmorphia? Mm. Are, are you? Is that something that you're familiar with, or do you not give a fuck about? You, you love your body positive, and you're just like I am who I am. I'm body positive, and just like if you're knowing what feels good, and you're getting away from it, you know what can you do to get back to it? And everyone has something they're not proud of. Some, hopefully, everyone has something they are proud of. Like yeah. you know what I mean, and try to I guess <laughs> accentuate or try to just think of those positive thoughts rather than like, oh man, like it doesn't compare to this. I'm like, yeah. how were you yesterday? Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. I need to learn a little bit of that because like I'm fine if I wake up in the morning, I'm looking skinty as fuck mm. and I'll deal with the the lower back issue. Mm. I'll be like, I, <laughs> I care less about this lower back issue uh, than I do about how I'm, you know, the lines on my body, yeah. which is, it should flip. I know that I'm healthy, but growing up a big boy, body dysmorphia is a mm. factor that I could never shake off. Um, uh, and which is why I'm wearing this shirt. It says still fat because no matter what, it's a piece of me that yeah. I grew up that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, nonetheless, I can learn from that. I think you're fat. Thanks dude. And he keeps me grounded and humble because sometimes I get a little overconfident because 10 more pounds, gee, 10, 10, more, more pounds. 10 more pounds. Dude, 10 Alex, more. did you buy him that shirt? <laughs> no, I <laughs> wish I did though. I bought myself this shirt. Shout no, out to I've Danny Loprior. Always said 10 more pounds. It's a good, it's a good shirt and it's, I, I vibe with it a lot. Um, you know how we end the episodes. We do a little bit of a, a, a comedy improv. Comedy improv. And I, I, how are you feeling about that? Are you? Have you ever done improv? Have you mm-hmm. ever done anything of the sort? Well, today's your day, <laughs> boy. You've been doing it for the episode. That's what I always tell people. Yeah, I mean, it's basically that's all improv. it is. Um, yeah, the improv scene. If this is your first time watching, uh, welcome. Uh, but we usually <laughs> do an improv scene at the end of the episode, and it could be anything about anything, or it could be about. In, inspired from anything earlier in earlier. the episode uh but yeah it's just a silly good old time and we're gonna get into it so we see we silly gillies yeah yes. uh, silly gillies are gonna go do, do this damn thing and if you want to say the words ladies and gentlemen them. highly relevant hey so um hey coach oh yes i'm coach i got the i got the headshot of the new guy he's coming from uh uh he's coming from the us christian i've told you well, we're not you're not you're not a theater director anymore, okay? You're now assistant coach to the New York Yankees. Yes, okay? I know that. I don't need headshots. But I you just want to know, know what the guys... There's a lot of similarities between the audition <clears throat> process and the tryout process. And this guy, I mean, I'm looking at his resume here. He <laughs> yeah. He started off with community baseball. Okay. Uh, and then he went into high school he went into high school baseball. He went from community baseball to high school baseball. Yeah, it's crazy. I did a little more research on his IG, and he said that he lost his passion in middle school. He did a little bit of wrestling, but now he's here. Oh, speaking of the devil. He's a wrestler? Wait. <laughs> he's right outside. You can ask him all of his questions. I'm going to ask him plenty of questions. Bring all him right. in. Bring him in, Christian. Uh, next, we have Ryan Wheat. Ryan Wheat, if you could come to the center hi, of the stage. Hi, Mr. Wheat. Oh, hi. Oh. Just sorry. go ahead. I'm so sorry. Just have a seat in the oh. chair there. Usually this we do Christian. it in the dugout, <clears throat> but we don't like doing it anymore. We like to oh. do it in the PAB. This is... Uh... Hi, my name is Coach Rex. I'm How the head coach. Coach Rex. Coach, coach Christian. Christian. I love nice to meet you, Coach Christian. Uh, Christian, this is only his first week here. We just got him. Uh, he just... You were just fired for... What was it? Phantom of the Opera? They just we they closed. I, fired is such an aggressive term. It did I'm close. Sorry, the show closed, and we had a mutual disagreement. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I thought he was on cats. They told me he was fan of the op. Either Creative way, differences. You can tell he's not. But uh, no, he's no. He's he, he is what he is. The front office put him here, and that's what it is. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm more of a old timey kind of guy. He's uh, the new way that the Yankees are going to do it. Broadway yeah. and pizzazz. So right. and he's Co- going to ask Coach Rex. Questions. Coach, Coach Rex. Rex. Yeah, Coach me. Christian. He'll Welcome ask board. you a question. I'll ask you a question. We just want to get to know you today, okay. Ryan. Tell us we... about your background. Uh, so I, you know, grew up playing community uh, uh, baseball. What was that like? I was, you know, community. You know, it was it's ba- community, it's community service. Community baseball, Christian. I understand that. You're just repeating the stuff he's saying. Well, I apologize we've all played. We've Chris. played baseball. I you have not. So I have he's not. not. Gonna I've done community theater. <laughs> I've same. done community. It's, 
it's the same. We found a common ground. Continue. So now tell us about your high school playing ability. Yeah. When you were in high school, tell us. It looks like your team won all four years. Yeah, we did, but you know, it just wasn't there. My passion uh, in middle school kind of faded Lost out. Lost it a little bit. You that said makes... team one. Is team two more like the understudies? One W-O-N. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was real. <laughs> what was your team name? <laughs> <laughs> that was. Um, I got it. <laughs> I real Christian is fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> oh, was there a team too? <laughs> I'm so upset. Oh, God. I swear. I swear. I'm not this. Welcome to outer space. Okay. All right. Um, Um, All right. My fault. Christian, are you okay? My fault. My fault. All right. Continue. So, yeah. Community baseball. and um, and Tell us about the wrestling in middle school. The wrestling in middle school. I, I, you know, I, uh, they had a mat. And uh, you know they just said <laughs> they just said I brother so you know I just knew how to you know get in there and, and try to cause havoc. Christian, you were raised by sisters. I was raised by sisters. Sisters. Yes, yeah, yeah. six of them. Never had any. Oh, that's okay. I mean, you're you're missing out. Love Disney. Mind if I take over for a second? Yeah. Of yeah. Course. What's your average pitching speed, Ryan? Uh, probably uh, you know sixty nine. About <laughs> nice. And what's the highest note on a keyboard they could hit? Oh Would you say God. it's a G seven? It's a G seven. G seven. That's really high. See. You know what? I'm just happy that he's making us both happy. happy. <laughs> That, that's my that's my goal. Uh, well, look, Ryan, Keep the interview happy. process has gone swimmingly. I think all we need to see is your athleticism, which, of course, we can't do in this tiny room <laughs> in yeah. this office building. Yeah. Um, what so, are you doing there? Wrestling. <laughs> can you g- <laughs> can you give him a lesson? <laughs> One more time. Risk control. Risk control. A lot of risk control. So, would you say a lot of the wrestling is translatable into into uh, your your baseball skills? Yeah, so like wrestling is is perfect for the Yankees. Um, you know, we 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 definitely practice the the hip thrust and the the spin move and You're familiar with the hip thrust? I am. So back when I did a chorus line oh, in the summer of 98, I was a part of the third act. You, you were in Kids Chorus Line? I was in Kids Chorus Line. And they had us Chorus do... Line, the musical about a, a prostitute named Gypsy Rose. It's very interesting because the choreographer made us do the hip thrust multiple times. So that's why this is translatable. Hmm. Fireman's carry, you know, we, we, we got it. And then I throw 69, I said. Mm, thank you. No, no. no we, don't worry, buddy. We got the 69. What, what is down. the new direction Yankees are trying to go in? The new direction, new uniforms, first and foremost. Okay. Yeah, you want to show him a picture? All right, right here. Uh, if you turn your head over to the PowerPoint that I have ready, okay. These are the very first uniforms that they had back, uh, back in the forties. Really? And I know what you're thinking. When were the Yankees wearing pink? But uh, Christian says they did. This is them now. In their classic stripes. navy blue and stripes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very right. nice. Classic. Very symmetrical. But imagine it, it with pink. I see it. It really pops. You know, it's something new. Yes. Something new. I like him. Can we have him on? You cannot have any of the players. I know. Not on the team. On the team. Um, that's from... Ryan, you're you're definitely on the team. I'm satisfied by your statistics. I think 69 is a fairly low pitching speed, but you're going to be shortstop anyway. So Six, no wait, what deal. is the, 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 the unit of... Uh, miles per hour. Of measurement. 69 miles per hour. <laughs> okay, sorry. Right here. I... I'm going to kill Christian in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill you! Oh God, your your job is safe for another day and a half. <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much. Any words uh, that we have? Any critiques on how we could do a better interview? Uh you know, I would le- really like to hear more about yourselves, and and you know, with the the asking of questions, you know, my life's it, private. It, okay, I'm an how open you got book. to this? How you got to this this position that you're newly into? Well, it was the summer of 96, community theater. I was three years old. Okay. My parents had put me in, and they said that you need to do something with that backflip. And so I did. Okay. Summer of 98, 
did my first show, a hey. chorus line. Oh. A chorus line summer of 98. Remember? That's hip right, thrust, that's hip thrust. Right. 99 was when you did hair. Yes. Summer of 99 is when I did hairspray. Yes. And mm. it oh, was, hairspray. Yes. Okay. Yes, hairspray. And I played the role that Zac Efron played in that movie. His name was? Zac Efron. And, okay. <laughs> and fast forward, a bunch of shows, a bunch of record deals, a bunch of contracts. Didn't work out. Mm. Last thing before this, it was a fan of the opera. Okay. Had creative differences. <laughs> and I know, I know Coach Rex's sister. I'll be damned. Yeah, my sister was uh, in a chorus line. Summer nice. of 98. Any follow up questions? Uh, no, I think I think the pink uh, pinstripes is a great touch. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah. You were on the team, and I cannot wait. First practice is on Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> I'll be there. And scene. Thank you for rolling with those punches. <laughs> we'll just roll with it, baby. You, sir. <laughs> I want an apology Ooh, to the MLB. <laughs> thank you for having me on. <laughs> okay, dude. Um, thank you. What thank a you fantastic time. Uh, we love you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, the way we usually end these episodes is that we have our very special guest look into the barrel of the camera and leave the listeners with a with a word, phrase, anecdote, anything of that sort. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. This entire time is going to be slowly. I'm just thinking of your team won. <laughs> if you get a dashiki, make sure it's appropriate. Did. If you get a dashiki, make sure it's appropriated. <laughs> appropriated. There we go. <laughs> All right. Ryan. Where could uh, people follow you? Where could they see more of you? Is yeah, there anything you want to plug? Will we see any of your baseball highlights? Rye bread, wheat bread, GCC on IG. Mm, nice. Okay. And until next time. Until next time, my friends. Baddies. Follow the podcast at ICBTB Podcast. That's TikTok. That is Instagram. You could search that up on YouTube. Just type it into Google. Yeah. We'll pop up ICBTB.com. For anything else that you need, uh, you can follow me at call underscore me Jesus. Follow me at Christian has asthma, and as always, and as we always say, stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you've never said that. You, you've ne- Maybe once or twice. Never said that. Maybe right. once or twice. Bye. Can't be that bad, dog.